Let's head now to the Scottish Highlands into a loch named Ness. It's famous, of course, for its monster, but the loch contains more fresh water than all the lakes in England and Wales combined. And the question that's never completely been answered is, other than the monster, what else is in Loch Ness? Well, the answer's on the way, courtesy of an international team of scientists and researchers led by Professor Neil Gemmell from Otago University. They're effectively conducting a kind of forensic census from bacteria up. Who lives there? Nessie's neighbours, in other words. What am I really off to do, John? So I'm going to Loch Ness, and I'm going to sample the waters of Loch Ness, and I'm going to try and figure out what organisms are living in the water using DNA sequencing technologies. So um, it's, it, it's a, it's a you know, classic science project where we want to understand what animals uh, and plants and bacteria live within the waters of Loch Ness. And, you know, as a consequence of the myth around the Loch Ness monster, uh, obviously we can uh, also posit that if there is such a thing and it is a biological being, that maybe we could actually... Uh, detect its presence using this technology. Did you, did you just use the word myth? Yeah, I used the word Oh, no, myth. the interview's over. We can't. <laughs> <laughs> no, hold myth. on. Wait a sec. But, don't, but don't. You know, like most things, most myths have a, have a biological basis. And so we are off to test uh, the waters of Loch Ness, and we are going to look at DNA sequences, and we'll test a number of hypotheses. So the one that's the most fantastical is this idea that the Loch Ness monster might be some jurassic aged reptile that's been trapped in Loch Ness for millions of years. Um, and I've got to say that I'm highly dubious about that as, a, as, a, as an explanation, but we can test that using science. So if it is a biological entity and it produces uh, DNA, uh, either uh, as, if you like, Loch Ness monster dandruff, or peas or poos, um, then there will be DNA that is releasing that we should be able to detect in the water samples that we take. And then we can test it against the tree of life. And we can say, OK, is there any sequences that we find in these samples from Loch Ness that would lead us to suggest that there are, as a giant reptile present in that, in that sample? Because I like the myth so much, I've kind of bought into all the narratives. One of them is that the Loch Ness is unusually deep. Well, it might be relative to lochs, but unusually in this case is only about 230 metres, right? So that doesn't actually give Nessie much space to hide in for millions of years, really, does it? No, but they talk about sea caves and all sorts of things, you know, and, the, and Loch Ness is connected to um, the North Sea by the Ness River, which is only six miles long. Um, so, you know, it's it's... it's it's a, it's a waterway, which is fresh water, but it also uh, is, is influenced by the tides. And there's, there's things that get into Loch Ness from time to time, like seals, and some people have said they've seen sharks. There's giant sturgeon that have been reported or thought to have been Loch Ness at various times. There's reports that the Victorians put giant catfish in there. All these are, again, um, stories that we hope we'll be able to put some uh, science behind. So, is there any evidence of giant catfish in Loch Ness? Is so, you see, so it, it, it's a bit like an episode of CSI. You turn up at the crime scene, in this case the Loch, and you look for what whoever has been there has left behind. Exactly. It's very, very much the same. Although, sadly, my team's not quite as glamorous as the CSI. <laughs> none, um, none of us are. None of us are. None of us are. That's right. But it's it's a very much the same sort of procedure. You know, you. You take the samples and you control the evidence chain because you don't want them to be contaminated. You want to know that this sample came from this spot at this time. And we take replicates and uh, their experiments are undertaken in a double blind fashion. So the people who are extracting the DNA won't know which samples came from Loch Ness and which ones didn't. And we'll be making comparisons to other locks to, to see if there's anything unusual about Loch Ness. Um, and then we'll establish a number of theories and hypotheses just as uh, people do in CSI, where they say, oh, I think this might be the criminal. Does the DNA profile match? Well, no, it doesn't, or yes, it does. So a very similar sort of process. It'll take us about six months to do that. After, it'll take us about two weeks to do the sampling, and then it'll take us about six months in the laboratory, which is far less glamorous uh, than on CSI, to figure out the answer. Professor Neil Gamble uh, from Otago University, who is off to lead that expedition. Well, what did Christopher Robin and Winnie the Peace to say? Exposition. Exp anyway, he's off.